Morgan Harrington was born on July 24, 1989, in Charlottesville, Virginia. In 2009, 20-year-old Morgan was a student at Virginia Tech. On the evening of October 17, Morgan and a few of her friends attended a Metallica concert at a John Paul Jones Arena at the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. During the concert, Morgan left to go to the bathroom and somehow ended up outside of the arena. She was not allowed back in because of a no-return policy. Morgan then called her friends who were still inside to tell them that she was going to get a ride home. Morgan was last seen by witnesses hitchhiking at half past nine on a nearby bridge. She was never seen alive again. Morgan's handbag was later found in a parking lot at the University of Virginia. Inside was her cell phone. On January 26, 2010, Morgan's remains were discovered by a farmer in a remote area about 10 miles from the arena. It was never made public in what manner her life was taken, but it is known that it was violent and that she was assaulted. In April 2010, it was made public that a t-shirt had been found about a mile from the arena that belonged to Morgan. It was what she had on when she was last seen. Morgan's DNA was found on it, as well as DNA belonging to an unknown man. Investigators found that the DNA from the unknown man belonged to a suspect in an assault case from 2005 in Fairfax, Virginia. The victim from that case described her attacker as an African-American male in his mid-twenties, roughly six feet tall, weighing between 180 pounds and 220 pounds. He had a beard and a mustache. A composite sketch was made of the man, hoping that someone could identify him, but no one came forward with any valuable information. Finally, in 2014, a different cold case led to progress in Morgan's case. Hannah Graham was a student at the University of Virginia in September of 2014. She went missing after going to a restaurant outside the campus with her friends. Investigators looked at surveillance footage of the area and saw an African-American man following Hannah. They also saw that a man forcibly had his arms around Hannah at one point. He was quickly identified as Jesse Matthew. Investigators arrested him a week after Hannah was last seen. His DNA was taken and it was found that his DNA matched the DNA found on Morgan's body and it also linked him to the 2005 assault case. In October 2014, Hannah's remains were located in an abandoned house in a nearby county. In March 2016, he confessed to all of his crimes and he was sentenced to four life sentences. As I only touched briefly on the Hannah Graham case, I will be covering it in more detail in a future video. Helen Brzezinski was a 20-year-old woman from Massachusetts. She was studying at Wheaton College, also in Massachusetts. In January 1980, she went to Colorado and started working as an intern for a Denver radio station. She was really just starting her life. Helen was living with her friend at her aunt's house in Englewood. On January 16, 1980, Helen went to work. After work, she took the bus like usual. She was not seen again after leaving the bus station. Helen's aunt got worried when she did not arrive home and reported her missing. It did not take long for police to find her. Her body was found the next day in a field. She had been stabbed. Investigators believed that she was abducted right after she left the bus station. DNA from a male was found at a crime scene. Unfortunately, in 1980, DNA technology was not very advanced and they could not identify the man. They did, however, store the DNA so they can one day use it again when DNA technology has advanced. Helen did not know a lot of people in the area since she only lived there for two weeks and did not have any known enemies. Investigators did not receive a lot of leads and the case went cold. In 1998, the DNA were uploaded to their database after a DNA profile could be created. 
but it did not match to anyone. In 2017, her case was reopened and investigators tried again to solve her case. They uploaded the DNA to jetmatch.com and found a couple of potential family members of the suspect. One of the family members they came across was Rob Deal. Rob was very eager to help. He explained his entire family tree as best he could and gave them a sample of his DNA. The investigators then used the help of CC Moore and Parabon Nanolabs to find a family member who would give them an exact match. In December 2019, they really narrowed it down to James Curtis Clanton. He was a very distant cousin of Rob. James was a truck driver living in Lake Butler, Florida. Investigators saw that he had a criminal history and found that he was on parole for an assault in Arkansas after serving four years in prison in 1980. He was released to live in a Denver home of a former counselor who offered to help him. This meant that he was in the area when Helen's life was taken and that he had a violent history. Investigators followed James for a few weeks. They retrieved a beer mug that he was drinking from at a bar. The DNA was tested and it was an exact match. Early in 2020, James was arrested. They are now also looking into other possible crimes he could be responsible for. Helen's sister, Janet Johnson, is really the only living close relative and she was ecstatic to hear the news of the arrest. Janet, now 70 years old, said, I want people to know what a special person Helen was. She was my best friend and she had a bright future ahead of her.